WrestleMania crowned four new world champions in one night. And arguably, there is three first new world champions in the Paul Levesque era. So I've actually compiled a list of wrestlers that I could see Triple H or Paul Levesque making a brand new world champion. And I'd like for you to pop your predictions down in the comments section as well and see if we have the same thoughts. Now, I'm only counting the four main titles for this category. The men's heavyweight or the men's WWE the men's universal the women's wwe and the women's universal championship and i'm starting this list with tiffany stratton now tiffany definitely has the look of a champion she also has the skills of a champion and i think she possesses that world champion aura and i actually think we've already seen that when we watched the elimination chamber in perth that live event she was possibly the one who i felt was allowed to showcase what she can really do because she was the one that possibly was the most unknown in that match out of all the women that was there she was allowed to showcase her skills and yet I feel like the crowd already knew that she was their favourite in that match. Because the crowd went absolutely mental for her during her entrance and when the countdown was coming on and she was stuck in the pod, everybody was asking for Tiffy time. And when she eventually came out, there was a huge pop. It was possibly one of the biggest cheers of the night and the whole Tiffy time thing. And I think Triple H would have made note of that. She also obviously had a very good run in NXT, which we all know Triple H would have been keeping a close eye on. That was his baby when... When it first came about it was his idea for nxt and he grew it into the mammoth third brand of what it is and i think triple h would have seen how good tiffany stratton was there and i don't think it'll be too long before now that she's on the main roster under triple h again that she comes close to a title shot possibly even after a Royal Rumble win. Next up on the list though is Braun Breaker. Now very similar to Tiffany Stratton, he has that new main roster eyes thing, but he has been a shining light of NXT for the last few years, at least two or three. Obviously he's been the main event of NXT Stand and Deliver, which is the biggest pay-per-view on WrestleMania weekend for NXT the last couple of years and then this year of course he was inarguably one of the best matches in the tag title match and then he was dropped as the tag title champion because looks like he's getting a main roster push and the guy has that star power look about him and he looks like a beast who anybody could be afraid of but there's a little bit of something different about Bron Breaker because I feel like he's different to the monsters that possibly would have thrived under Vince McMahon such as you know, Braun Strowman, for instance, or Bobby Lashley, in the fact that he's actually a really good wrestler. Not saying the other ones aren't, but he is a super athlete capable of doing things that cruiserweights can do. He constantly impresses with his high athleticism, where he's able to just, you know, jump and leap up to the top rope, and his super uh, speed, which you can see when he's running the ropes. Everybody is waiting for the next Braun Breaker highlight reel in every match he is part of. Now, I don't think that goes unnoticed either. However, I do feel like there is a slight weakness with him in that he is pretty probably not up to the caliber of world champion in terms of on the mic he isn't bad on the mic but when you think about the current champions or the ones that we've just had triple h loves to build storylines around a very good promo and i don't think he is quite there yet however there is a certain wise man paul Heyman, who might not have anybody to be at ringside for anymore if we go on the fact that possibly roman reigns may take a bit of a long break. So could you place Paul Heyman as the mouthpiece for Bron Breaker and could that shoot him up to main event caliber star? Maybe not for Cody's title, but hey, there are two world championships here. Speaking of Cody's title though, Next to my list is Gunter. And I think it's obvious that Triple H holds huge stock in Gunter. Like the guy has been champion at WWE for about 80% of his time under contract. And that's mainly under Triple H as well. All right, there was a lot of the time where Vince was in charge, where he was Intercontinental Champion. But like the time at NXT UK and then in NXT, there's been so many times where Gunter is kind of the guy to be the target to go for and that intercontinental title run was absolutely legendary he broke all the records for it and it wasn't like everybody was always relying on gunter for putting on match of the night caliber style of matches i think that's basically what he does he took that title made it into an unbelievable title reign 
whilst putting on some of the best matches that WWE have ever seen, especially in this era. And I think going into the Triple H era or the Paul Levesque era, we could be seeing Gunter in a world title reign. And I don't think it will be that far away either. I think he's the perfect opponent for Cody next WrestleMania. And whether you think that means he should be winning the Royal Rumble, kind of like I said for Tiffany Stratton, I don't think that's a bad idea at all. He's come really close from winning the Royal Rumble a couple of times and Cody was the one who cost him from winning it. I think that could be a perfect WrestleMania match for Cody next year. And it could be that Intercontinental run that he's just had was that almost like a test run for a world title reign. Oh, this one's going to be a quite a quick one. I think Julia uh, or Julia? Julia? I think it's Julia who's just signed for NXT literally the last weekend. She hasn't even had a match in WWE yet. I think she's a megastar. And I've only seen a couple of matches of her at Stardom in Japan. And I still think that she could be world champion material at WWE in the Paul Levesque era. I really do. I don't think it's going to be too long before we see her become the main attraction in the women's division in NXT either. And that division's really good. They've added a another title in there the women's north american title could she be the perfect person to win the first win it for the first time i think so and then that then predicts that she might propel herself up to the main ross or the main title for nxt in the stand and deliver pay-per-view at next year's WrestleMania. I definitely think she's got the look. She's definitely got the skills. She's arguably one of the best women's wrestlers in the world. She just needs to learn the WWE way and obviously learn more of the language and work on promos and stuff in, in the English language instead of in Japanese. I think we could see that in the next few years. A distant future, but still in the Paul Levesque era. One that might surprise you, though, that I would suggest is Jay Cargill. This is just a possibility. This is a out-of-the-box suggestion because my last two, I think, are two out-of-the-box suggestions. She definitely has the look. She looks like a beast. She definitely has star power just looking at her. But there is a lot of work to make her a world champion. She's actually not bad at promos, I don't think, and I think that's one of the main things that she can put across right away. She can talk, definitely, and she has the look, but it's the wrestling that might not be her best attribute right now. But that's something that she can work on, and I, I actually respect her for leaving AEW and going, no, I need to go to this company if I want to become the best I want to be. And I think she's already being built as quite unstoppable. She had a squash match on the Monday after Mania, and I think that's going to just continue. I think we're just going to see her squashing people. Maybe the match was getting a little bit longer than 10 seconds, but she's definitely being made a big deal out of, and that's on purpose. Could we see Triple H take a chance on possibly like a Goldberg style of run with Jay Cargill, where she goes on an unbeaten run, very much like AEW had her booked, but Goldberg style into a title picture. She could go up against Bailey. who knows? Just a couple of honorable mentions, because these three guys, one of them, surprisingly, has never been a world champion, and I still think it is a possibility. So honorable mentions, first off, Sami Zayn. Why not? I definitely think he has the fans behind him right now. He's just won the Intercontinental title. Is he deserving of a world title? Absolutely. Next up, Carmelo Hayes. He's phenomenal in NXT. I really like all of his matches. Could he be bumped up to the main roster and possibly win a world title? Definitely not in the near future. But hey, there's a lot of wrestlers on that main roster right now who are late 40s, possibly looking to retire, and there needs to be those spots filled. And I think Carmelo Hayes would definitely be a fantastic world champion in like 10 years' time. My final honorable mention, though, is Ilya Dragunov. Now, this is very similar to the Gunter situation, where the guy just doesn't know how to put on a terrible match. He's just really good all the time. And obviously, he's the current NXT champion, so it's kind of like, well, he's NXT champion. He's not going to be world champion just yet. And I'm again talking talking about years into the future. However, my next and final mention of who I think could possibly be a world champion in the Paul of Akira, I don't think it'll be too long. And that is Logan Paul. 
Yes. I know, I hate to say it, but Logan Paul, considering he's just a YouTuber, is absolutely incredible at wrestling. I should know I'm a wrestler myself. He is absolutely phenomenal, and I've not seen him really in a bad match. He holds his own against some of the best, including, as we've seen at WrestleMania, Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. He is very good in the ring, and WWE are really leaning into his audience right now. That young audience that they're trying to persuade that wrestling is cool again. And I think that's working. And I think WWE are like, hey, we need to just keep leaning into this. That's the reason why he's still the United States champion. And he's still, he's getting like huge wrestlers on his podcast. Impulsive. Like, there's a reason why Triple H has been on it. Maybe more than once. I think Logan Paul could be a world champion. He has the stardom. He just needs to keep his nose clean. So there we have it. Do you agree with my six picks and maybe some honorable mentions of who is going to be a world champion under Paul Levesque in this new Triple H era? Let me know down in the comments section. And as I mentioned, yes, I am also a professional wrestler. And I had a match for TC. Which is a promotion that I run in the UK down in Plymouth. We had our first show and it's all for charity. We raised over a thousand pounds for charity. And if you want to watch the match that I was on, I'll leave it up on screen right now. Click it, watch it, enjoy it, subscribe to TCW. Maybe you want to come watch a match very, very soon. I would love to see you there. Bye bye.